Welcome back, everyone. I hope everyone's still doing well. Um, we're going to continue on with lecture four. Once again, I'm Stuart Mitchell, a graduate student at uh, Wayne State University, and I work for Professor Oaks. We're going to continue right along with lecture four. I hope everyone's doing all right still. Um, in this set, section or in this lecture we're going to be talking about multiplying and dividing sign numbers and variables um, but mostly in this one just multiplying and dividing sign numbers but uh, er, and some variables too but I will we'll talk about that okay so once again we should probably discuss some rules to um, go through that are that are helpful and that are necessary to do to um, go through with this lecture so in this one um, the first, I guess, rule to, to mention is that a positive number times a positive number and a positive number divided by a positive number will result in a positive number. For example, um, or just, I guess, to visualize, for any two numbers, any two positive numbers, if you have x times y, um, you're going to end up with positive xy. You just multiply them together like that. Or if you have x divided by y, you're going to have positive x over y. Um, you're just going to end up with positive numbers. Whenever you have two positive numbers, you're going to end up uh, end up like that uh, with another positive number as a result. When when we're considering two negative numbers, it might be uh, um, a little bit counterintuitive to think about, but we have a um, if you have any negative number times another negative number and uh, a negative number divided by another negative number, it's always going to re uh, result in a positive number. That mostly um, just works because you can, or because uh, you can like factor out the negative one in those and, um, and then like cancel it that way. Um, it, Sounds a little uh, less intuitive and makes a little less sense when I just say it, so I'll show you. If you have, for example, negative x times negative y, we can think about both of these neg or both of the negatives in front, namely this uh, and this one and this one, as multiplying a positive number by negative one, and then we can since multiplication, as we know, is commutative which means you can multiply in any order to get the same result. Um, you can pull these negatives out front. So you'd have negative one times negative one times x times y. Well, like we were talking about in the last lecture, um, for, as the reason that a negative uh, or minus a negative is plus positive, when you multiply two negative numbers together, um, like two both negative ones together, they're gonna um, they're gonna result in a positive one, because any two negative numbers multiplied together is equal to a positive number, which is equal just then to x, uh, x y, x times y, positive x times y, um, because these negatives cancel each other out any two negatives multiplied together will give you a positive number. When you're dividing, the logic is fairly similar to that. Sorry, bear with me, I have to switch it back frequently. If you had negative x divided by negative y, you think about this as like a fraction, you'd have negative x over negative y, which you could think of as negative one times x over negative one times y. And um, since we have the same factor on the, in the numerator and denominator, we can cancel it out. Excuse me. 
and use the rule we just created, the negative divided by negative is a positive. We have negative one, negative one, that's just gonna be positive one. So we're just left with a positive x over y, as in this case, we're left with a positive x times y. So it seems a little bit like, why would that work? Like that's, that seems counterintuitive. Why do two negatives give you a positive? Well, that's, that's the like logic behind it. It has to do with the factoring out the negative ones um, and they cancel with each other. Now, the only other case we could potentially think of with this, or rule number three, as we could call it, is if you'd have, um, there's multiple cases in here. So we're gonna call this one case A. Uh, you have a positive number times a negative number. And um, in the same case, if you had positive divided by negative, in either case, you're going to get a negative number as a result. Um, you guys, you can think about this as if you have like a mixed, mixed signs in multiplication and or division, you're going to get a negative number as a result. This is the only time when you're multiplying and dividing sign numbers that you would get a negative as a result. Otherwise, it is going to be positive as a result, as we saw up here. In either case, in rules one or two, when you're dealing with both positives or both negatives, you're always going to get a positive number as a result. This is the only situation in rule three, if you have um, like mixed signs where you have a positive and a negative, and then a positive and a negative um, on either side of the operation will your result in a negative number when multiplying and dividing. The other case is similar and it works just the same way. The only case, the only difference is if you had a negative number times a positive number and or a negative number divided by a positive number, you're going to result in a negative number. Um, you can, I just decided to list these separately um, just to think about them in either order. It works the same way, um, no matter if the negative comes first or second in this line, it works just the same way. Um, the reason like behind this one where you could think of it as in like if you thought, think of in case A, if you have like positive x times negative y, you can think of this as negative one times y, and you and since multiplication is commutative, you can move it, you can multiply in any order and move that around. So this would end up being negative one times positive x times positive y, which is going to result in negative x y. Um, the division's really sim uh, really similar. If you had um, pot of positive x over negative y, um, you could uh, you could think of this as x over negative one times y, and since it's just um, just one, you can, um, like you're just dealing with a factor of one at this point, you can move the negative uh, wherever. It's just, um, it's gonna apply no matter what. Um, in either case, like if you had the negative in the numerator or denominator, it would make the whole fraction, uh, the whole fraction negative, the whole uh, division negative, the result. So you'd have the whole quotient negative. So you'd have negative x over y. And, in part, if I was to go through it with uh, them in different directions, like in case B, it's the exact same logic. It's just in different directions. The same rules apply. Um, that's the only difference there. So now we can start going through some of the examples. So in number one, we have negative nine uh, multiplied to 11 minus four. This is another test of, but you could think about it in two ways, either the distributive property or um, order of operations. I'll show you both because either way works just the same. Although I think one is easier than the other, but it's, it's totally your call. 
Um, so I'll do, uh, since it requires less room, the order of operations first, which means we have to take care of the um, operation in parentheses first, which means that we would have negative nine times 11 minus four is seven. And then negative nine times a positive seven, we're applying a mi the mixed one here, the um, rule number three here because we have negative nine times negative seven, or negative nine times positive seven, pardon me. Oh, let me erase that because that looks very confusing. I tried to fix it, but it did not work that well, quite how I like would have liked it to. So we have negative nine times Okay, I guess it doesn't wanna doesn't wanna work with me here. Times positive seven, which we'd have, which would then, if we thought about it, like the rule three, would be like negative one times nine times seven, which would then just be negative sixty three. So there's that way, uh, that way to do it. If you were to choose to do the distributive property, it'd be a little bit more uh, more work, but it's still definitely doable. If you did chose the distributive property route, you would distribute this negative nine to the negative 11 and to the negative four. Keep in mind I said negative four because this minus sign is attached to the four. If it helps you to see that, you can think of this as negative nine times 11 plus negative four you have to keep the negative with the four. So if you carried out this distribution, you'd have negative nine times positive 11. Um, and then you have plus negative nine times negative four. And then um, following order of operations and um, and rule number two here, a negative number times a negative number. So negative nine times negative four is gonna give you a positive number. These negatives are going to cancel with each other here. They're gonna cancel out. So we'd be left with, um, if you consider negative nine times positive 11, it, it's like we did up here, um, a negative times a positive is gonna give you a negative uh, as a result. So we'd have negative 99, um, plus a positive 36, which is still going to have you result in negative 63 for your final answer. It just required a little bit more work. Um, it's up to you how to do it. I just personally think using order of operations or this direction is easier because it requires less computation. Um, other like, but you know, it, uh, you can apply two different rules to get the exact same result. It is completely up to you how you'd like to do that. And switch colors for number two since we might be overlapping here just a smidge. Um, okay, so in number two, we're going to use we're going to end up using rule number two, and also just the um, the rule that multiplication is commutative. And I know I keep saying that over and over, but it's a really really important rule to have, especially when you're multiplying and dividing sign numbers and variables, it's important to keep in mind because it can help you think about it better. We can multiply these in any order we want and still get the same answer. So I'm going to say that this is negative two times negative six times positive five. Using rule number two, we know that a negative number times a negative number is going to give us a positive number, or in other words, the negative will cancel. So we can think of both of these as pos, like if you're multiplying positive numbers now, two times six we know is 12, so we have 12, positive 12 times five now, which we know is 60. So that's one way to think about it. You could multiply it straight out and use um, rule number three uh, if you chose to do it um, a different way like that. Like if we carried this over here to consider it and we did 
um, negative two times five times negative six and applied rule number three. A negative times a positive is going to result in a negative. So this, this would give you negative 10. And then we're still multiplying by negative six. And then we could use rule two in this step. A negative times a negative, both of these negatives are gonna cancel with each other. So that we just have 10 times six, which is 60. So you can do it in any way you want to. Um, it's um, this one, you know, the first way that it just requires less, I guess, less rules, a little bit, tiny bit less computation. It's not that much, you know, it's not anything significant. Do it however you, uh, however it makes the most sense to you. Um, it's just if you cancel the negatives first, then you're just left with two positive numbers to multiply instead of having to add a negative, you know, create a negative number in this step and then multiply it by another negative number. But do it however you'd like to. It works either way. Okay, moving along to the next example. We have negative 9 times negative 4 times negative 2. So we're gonna, we can't really, you know, changing these around won't really help us. Like it's not going to do much because we, uh, they're all negatives to start off with. So we're going to use rule number two first, working left to right in this case. Um, it's just a good rule of thumb whenever you can, uh, whenever, whenever possible, um, and like go left to right just to keep yourself organized. And that's just conventional. So if we think of negative nine times negative four, we are going to apply rule two. And that's going to, these negatives are going to cancel themselves out. And we're going to be left with nine times four, which is positive 36. And then we're going to be left with negative times negative two. And then we can use rule three in this step, where a positive number times a negative number is going to result in a negative number. So we keep this negative sign, and then 36 times 2 is 72. So we're left with negative 72. There's, I mean, there's not like really a super different way you could do that. You could change the order that you multiply them in if you like doing a certain product over another uh, first. But otherwise, it's pretty, pretty standard just to multiply left to right. But you could change the order of multiplication anyway. But that doesn't change this, the fact that you have three negatives multiplied together, so you'd have to apply the different the different rules no matter what order you multiplied in in this case. Okay, and then moving along to, I'm gonna keep switching colors over here. I'm gonna be a whole rainbow in a minute. Um, when you're dividing two negative numbers, um, when, as we discussed in rule two, this is strictly in rule two, um, if you have a negative number divided by a negative number, it's going to be a pot. You're going to, the negatives are going to cancel and you're going to result in a positive number. So these negatives are going to cancel. And then you're just going to be left with, oops, I don't know what just happened there. 30 divided by six, which equals five. So that one wasn't, that one wasn't too bad. Okay. Sorry, this, uh, some of the text didn't come with this one. This is supposed to say, uh, oop, that's not what it's supposed to say. It's not supposed to say oop. Um, what it is supposed to say is, um, is uh, this is a statement, and it's supposed to say true or false. So we're looking if this is true or false. So we have to, in order to do that, we can just straight up, do the division ourselves and see what we get. So if we consider negative, we can think about this. You can apply the negative here to either the numerator or denominator. It is completely up to you. I always choose when I can to apply it to the numerator just because it seems easier that way for me. That's just a personal thing, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Either way you want to do it is fine as long as it goes to one or the other. But now that we have a negative number divided by a positive number, that goes down to rule three, which we can take a peek at again because I feel like we haven't seen it in a minute. In this case, we have a negative number, a uh, negative number divided by a positive number. So we're going to result in a negative number. That negative is going to carry to the quotient. 
So this will be, we're going to carry that negative to the quotient and then 54 divided by 6 is 9. But our answer overall is negative 9. And they, they're trying to claim that it's equal to positive 9. So this would be, uh, it would be false. Sorry, that was terrible, terrible handwriting. Let me redo that for you real quick. This would be false. Um, because we, as we see, um, a negative divided by a positive is going to give you a negative. Um, thinking about the rules, a good way to quick check too if you don't want to carry out the operation, just think you have a negative number, um, either negative number divided by a positive, or if you want to think about it the other way, a positive divided by a negative. In either case, the result should be negative, but this result is positive, so it's false. Um, and that's just, I guess, a good, like a good rule of thumb, not necessarily for this topic, but just in general, when something's asked, when they're presenting you with a, a statement, mathematical statement or uh, equation, and they're asking you if it's true or false, calculate it yourself and make sure you get the same thing, because if you don't get the same thing, then it'll be false. Okay, this one is a little, or the next one is a little bit different just because there is a variable here. Um, but we can, you know, we just think about variables like when they're next to a coefficient is there's, they're being multiplied together. That P variable does not have a negative sign on it, so we can assume that it's positive. It also would, you know, change the outcome. Um, so if we think about the, um, the commutative property of multiplication or that multiplication is commutative because that the cross in the middle is for multiplying we can switch the order that we multiply in and still uh, get the same answer. So we can think about this as negative 4 times negative 6 times p. Well, we know that if we have two negative numbers multiplied together, applying rule 2. Oops, sorry, that was, that was not good. That was just ghastly. Here's that. Okay, sorry about that. Let's try that again. If we apply rule two, these negatives are going to cancel each other out. And we're going to be left with four times six P. We know four times six is positive 24. So we're going to be left with 24 P overall. Because we have a negative number times a negative number, then times a positive number. And now it, using rule two, we had just have three positive numbers multiplied together, so we should end up with a positive result. So that is cool too. And that's also helpful. The commutative property of multiplication, meaning that you can multiply in any order to get the same result, is especially helpful when you introduce variables to the mix. Because if you have coefficients, you're generally going to want to multiply the coefficients together because then because you, you can, you'll get another result to simplify. Um, and then you can put the variables together as well um, and organize them like that. It's just, uh, it's helpful for that, for that regard quite a bit when you're, uh, especially when you start dealing with variables. So I know I'm talking quite a bit. I just want to make sure that you have all the information that I could possibly give you about this. Okay, so first of all, we're going to apply the commutative property of multiplication because we want to switch the order of this around because this, we can evaluate this negative 12 times 4. We can't really evaluate a times b. They're just variables. All we can do is just multiply them together and call it ab. It's just another variable. Um, so we can call this negative 12 times 4. And then if we put the a and b together, we just have times a times b or times ab. Well, now we have a, um, a rule 2 situation, which we'll take a peek at again. Um, oops, sorry, I scrolled a little bit too far. Um, no, I'm sorry, that's not rule two that I defined. It's rule three. We have a rule three situation. We have a negative times a positive. So our result should be negative. So keeping that in mind, our result should be negative. And then we have 12 times four, which is 48. So we're going to get negative 48 in general. 
a b is simplified as much as it possibly can be so it just gets multiplied along and you end up with negative 48 a b overall so that is how you'd evaluate this um with variables involved too and like i said just to reiterate because i think it's just super important um the commutative property of multiplication becomes especially important when you start working with variables too because you're when you start working with variables you're always going to want to combine all of the terms that you can to make it as simplified as possible um and that uh, when you're multiplying and dividing them especially when you're multi like when you're multiplying them as we did in uh, numbers six and seven respectively you um you can use the commutative property of multiplication and commute or switch the order of the multiplication to put the variables after the coefficients or after the numbers the physical numbers that you see the concrete numbers that you see to um to simplify it more um sorry to drag that on i just think it's important and i wanted to make sure that i stated that as clearly as possible um but that concludes our fourth lecture uh thank you for listening and I will talk to you next time. Thank you.